Okay, well, thank you. Can everyone hear me? Is that all right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Good stuff. Okay. So I've had no food and I've had a bit of alcohol now, so I've been a bit relaxed. <laughs> a little bit tipsy almost, so let's see how it goes. <laughs> so yeah, um, my uh, presentation is um, about startup projects from a tech perspective. Um, and it's kind of a candid view of startup life, um, so I'll try and be as honest as I can, uh, warts and all. Um, so yeah, originally, some of you may think that um, the original title was um, about Food Diary, which was um, an app that I built as part of one of the startups. Um, and that was built last July with Angular 2, Ionic 2, uh, Meanstack, and AWS. Um, but then as I was writing it, I realized that Angular 2 and Ionic 2 were in beta mode at the time, and it's changed so much that it wouldn't be of that much use. Um, so instead, yeah, I thought I'd talk about my experiences. Um, so yeah, my history. Um, yeah, so I've got 10 years experience as a front-end developer, uh, one year's experience as a full-stack developer, uh, two years experience as a scrum master and technical team leader um, and I've been involved in startups uh, for just over a year um, when I went to a startup weekend with uh, Alex, I was on a team with Alex, I was sitting over there um, and in those startup weekends I came second, first and first um, and then yeah I got into the bootcamp stage of iLab Germinate as well um, who knows what an accelerator is, a startup accelerator? Who doesn't know? Okay, cool. I'll, I'll explain what it is then. Uh, so an accelerator is where an organization will um, buy equity uh, from a company um, and basically they'll invite people to um, apply for the accelerator and they'll put them through a program uh, where they basically will give them mentorship and then put them through this program that really, really kind of accelerates their startup to get customers and traction. Um, so yeah, I got into the kind of latter stages of that. Didn't get through to the final stage, but that was a really, really good experience. Um, I quit full-time work in June 2016, um, but then after six months I got quite fed up with having no money. Uh, none of my startups are making money, so um, I got a part-time job at an agency called Roland. Um, basically fell into my lap, uh, so yeah, I started that. Uh, so that's three days a week, and now I'm on startup two days a week. Um, biggest mistakes of my career. Um, again, I'm a little bit nervous, as Chris Briggs said. Um, it's good to share things personal. Um, when you're nervous. So yeah, uh, after my gap year, I was kind of really um, kind of loose on on what I was doing and basically I kind of said that I knew AS3 when I didn't at all. I knew AS2 but not AS3. So I kind of lied uh, to put it bluntly on my CV and in my interview. And then after a week I realized, oh, AS3 is actually much more complex. It's like Victoria to programming, etc. Um, and then, yeah, after a week I was kind of, okay, this is really difficult. But um, yeah, I learned it and so I kind of worked with them. And, it was all good in the end. Um, yeah, technical team leader, so when I was a, te a tech team lead, um, I got promoted above uh, the rest of the team, um, and I was making a lot of mistakes, as you would in my first year. Um, and then, yeah, people don't have much empathy for their boss's mistakes. So that was quite hard, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it was, it was a good learning experience at the same time. Um, and everything in startups as well. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's a whole new world, so yeah, making lots of mistakes, but that's the best way to learn, right? Um, and also staying places too long. So I was working on desktop apps for probably about six years. Um, so I felt like I got quite comfortable as well, um, and I wasn't learning as much as I could have. So after about two years, I think I should have kind of moved on from uh, one certain company. Um, achievements, uh, yeah, being a technical team leader, that was good. Um, I did Ironman Zurich in 2014, um, and also be building a food diary in three weeks, which was a good achievement for me. Um, and that was, that's what leads me on to uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, so yeah, when did I build this food diary? So this was when I went into a startup weekend, um, and I met uh, eight people there, um, and we called the, um, the, the startup Nom Nom Snap, um, who knows what a startup weekend is? And who doesn't know? Okay, I'll explain that as well. So, a startup weekend is um, where you will um, all turn up on a Friday night. Um, it's a bit like a hackathon. Uh, so, you'll turn up on the Friday night, and then there'll be people that are pitching at the front, and you can choose to pitch or join another team. Um, and basically, if you pitch, you kind of form the team, and if you don't pitch, you choose a team to join. Um, and then over the weekend, you'll build a prototype, you'll try to get money for the prototype, 
and on the Sunday morning, um, yeah, you'll, make, you'll have a picture who will pitch it, the idea, um, and then, yeah, uh, someone will win. Um, so, yeah, we basically won that one because we had a very good picture, uh, Mary, the girl there in the middle, pitched, um, and we had a good prototype because we used Clarify, um, which they have an image recognition API. Um, and basically, we it's not that good, but what we did was it could recognize a banana and an apple, and we hard-coded the nutritional um, analysis of banana and apple, and basically on the presentation, we basically just took a picture of a banana and apple and said, oh, look, it works, it's really good. Um, so the judges were really impressed, and then we won. <laughs> um, yeah, we tried taking a picture of a yogurt, and I think we thought it was a tree, so yeah, it really wasn't that good. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, what happened after that weekend? Um, so basically, the team went from eight people to two. Um, I think on these startup weekends, you know, everyone's a bit skittish. Everyone's got their own perspective on things. You've only just met people. Um, I think yeah, the best way to find a startup founder is kind of if you've known someone for years and you've worked with them. Um, yeah. So after that, we thought, okay, what's the best way to try and go forward? Um, and we were told that you need to be able to sell a piece of string. So Basically, you want to try and sell a product um, without actually having the product. Um, so that's really difficult, and we tried that, and we couldn't do it. Um, so, and when we tried to do a bit of the image recognition, we had issues as well, which I'll go on to um, in, a, in a second. Um, so the first task we did, we thought, okay, we'll build a food and symptoms diary, which would be a lot simpler. So basically, um, the idea was you have a naturopath or a nutritionist, and they'll, this will improve the um, relations between the, them and their clients, um, and give them reports on what their clients are eating, but the key thing was the symptoms as well. So say they have a loaf of bread, or sorry, two slices of bread in the morning, and if they're bloated afterwards, they can record all that. Um, image recognition issues. Um, so I won't leave that uh, for too long, because uh, no one will be listening to what you say. <laughs> that wasn't the issue we had. But. <laughs> um, so yeah, the image recognitions we had was, um, so if you're going to picture, if you're trying to take a picture of a bowl of spaghetti, um, it's really difficult to know what size that is, because it could be a really small bowl, it could be a really big bowl. So we thought, oh, maybe they could put their credit card by the bowl, or maybe we could get something with two cameras, but then that's just increasing the hassle factor for the user. Um, also, there could be hidden foods. So if someone takes a picture of that spaghetti, the, the user could have put uh, a, a bottle of vegetable oil, or they could have put a teaspoon of vegetable oil, or they could have put you know, whatever in it. The app's still not going to know. It's still going to have quite a manual process. Um, also, it took too long to build the, te uh, the tech. Um, yeah, I've got no AI experience. And with my runway, which is uh, how long your savings will last for before you have to work again, um, I thought, well, it's going to take probably 12 months to get the tech done, and by that point, we'll run out of money. Um, and also, I think we had some inexperience, and we got cold feet. Um, so yeah, we decided to fail that idea, which is not necessarily a bad thing, I think. But I'll go into the food and symptoms diary. Um, yeah, when I was building it, it was using Angular 2 and Ionic 2 and Beta mode. Um, it was using Heroku, um, and as I said, the reason I'm kind of, I think this is a good achievement for me personally, is because um, it was the first time I'd even learned about like platform as a service, Heroku, AWS, for, for a number of years because I've been stuck on desktop apps. Um, so yeah, I was using AWS S3, AWS Lambda as well. Um, and MeanStack, uh, the Angular and Node part I knew, but the Mongo and Express, that was new to me. Um, so yeah, I got into a habit of learning um, MeanStack and, and AWS for two hours in the morning, then working for as long as I could on the actual app in the evenings and the day, sorry. Uh, so this is what it looked like. You can visit it on nomnomsnap.com. Um, Ionic 2 is very, struggles a lot with in its bootstrapping process. Um, it takes about 20 seconds to load it up, and it wasn't beta mode at the time. So I thought I'd have some screenshots instead of um, the potential of everything going wrong. Um, so yeah, you log in, and you see the screen on the left there. That will be um, your diary. Um, and then you yeah, use the an HTML camera uh, syntax to take a picture of the food. Um, and then you can see on the right, it'll add that capsicum there to the food diary. Um, and then you type in what it is, um, 
and you've got the date there, and then, yeah, the, basically, the idea was that the nutritionist could then view reports um, of everything that the, that the uh, user's eaten, but we kind of, we failed the idea before I got there, so, and again, with Ionic 2, I was planning on making it um, available on iOS and Android, but again, it stayed as a web app because I scrapped it. Um, and also, you could, you could add uh, manual food entries and manual symptom entries as well. Um, and there it is again, some beer and espresso, and, uh, pepper and everything, yeah. Um, so yeah, the app architecture. Uh, so yeah, as I said, using Ionic 2 to um, deploy, well, it could have deployed in uh, Android and iOS, um, and then Angular 2 for the data flow. Um, yeah, using Express to kind of um, route that, that, that data to the back end, uh, sitting on top of Node and to Heroku. Um, yeah, it's the first time I'd use it. I'd used Mongo, so I was just using Mongo Lab because yeah, then I didn't have to worry about any of the setting up of the databases or anything like that. Um, the biggest eye for me was Amber AWS. Um, so yeah, I thought it was really cool that you could um, post a, an image to S3, um, and then Lambda would get triggered off that event, and then it would duplicate those images and resize them as thumbnails. Um, so I thought that was really cool. Serverless architecture again, like um, the guys were talking about in the, in the, in the talk at the beginning. Um, and yeah, so uh, that was a real like, eye opener for me. Uh, so what happened overall? Uh, in June 2016, as I said, I quit work. Um, July 2016, I built the Food Diary um, an alpha version. Uh, August 2016, I took a three week holiday in the UK, so that didn't help. Um, and in September 2016, we applied for a grant for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Um, so what they wanted was a proposal which we partnered with UQ for to uh, build a food diary without any electricity, but do it in a digital way. <laughs> so uh, that was really difficult, and we just ended up with a very generic proposal. Um, and yeah, it just, it just, it just didn't get through. Um, so then, yeah, in September, we pivoted from the Food and Symptoms Diary because after speaking to naturopaths and nutritionists, we realized that most of them are part-time mums um, and they don't have money, plus they're not really interested in going digital, they just wanted to use their pen and paper still. Um, so in October of 2016, we used the seven-day startup concept for new ideas. Uh, who doesn't know what seven-day startup concept is? Cool, okay, I'll explain that. Uh, the reason I explain this is because I think it's really, really cool if any of you want to go start your own startup or project and you're working full time, uh, you can test an idea by working in the evenings and weekends and it's just really structured and it's a really good way of getting something started. So I would encourage you to, to do this if, if, if you've got an idea that you want to start. Um, so with this day one, it's a bit like a startup weekend but kind of lengthened into seven days. Uh, day one is ideation, so you have a checklist where you think of the best ideas. Uh, day two is uh, what the fuck is an MVP, so you kind of um, you uh, think what your MVP is going to be. And this does suit service businesses more because obviously you can't build a SaaS product in a week. Um, it's it's got to be service because you can do it immediately. Um, day three is the business name. I don't think you need a day for that. I think you just need a couple of hours. Like, yeah, as long as it doesn't do detriment to the company, I don't really care about that. Um, I know a lot of startups will spend weeks trying to think of a name, but for me, that's a waste of time. Um, day four, you build the website, so simple landing page um, and ability to accept payments. Uh, day five is the marketing plan. Uh, day six is setting targets, so you set what targets you'd like to achieve. So monthly revenue every uh, for every month, and then day seven you launch, and that's when you validate your idea. Uh, so what am I doing now? So yeah, I went through the, the seven day startup, and uh, I landed on a eulogy writing service, which is a little bit out there. Um, <laughs> the way we got to that was uh, we were down the pub, and we thought, what are the things you can't avoid in life? And it's death and taxes. And then suddenly my friend said, ah. Oh, it was really difficult to write my dad's eulogy when he died, so why don't we try that? So I said, okay, let's give it a go. So yeah, that's what I'm trying at the moment. Um, and then also, I would like to go on a world trip uh, to San Francisco and the UK, because as you can hear, I'm from, I'm from the UK, and I've only just delved into startups in Brisbane, so I only know what the ecosystem's like here, so I'd like to discover what it is like in other countries. Um, freelancing remotely as well. 
Uh, that's Homer Woods, fat guy hat on. <laughs> Brilliant episode. Um, but yeah, freelancing remotely as well to um, kind of top up my funds if I'm not making money out of the startup. Uh, so lessons learned. Uh, so now I've kind of done my own thing for six months. Um, employment, employment is less and more attractive for me because it's less attractive because now I kind of when I'm doing something for someone else, it just seems a bit futile almost. Um, but it's more attractive because just to have a regular wage would be awesome. It's like you do get a bit tired when you're having to save money all the time. Um, also, um, oh yeah, self-motivation is hard, so yeah, when I'm sitting by myself in a co-working space and there's no one to make me accountable, it, it can be difficult to get going when there's so much to do as well. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking about getting someone that can make me more accountable where I'm thinking, shit, I've got to do it because, because they're going to be there and I'm expecting something. Um, also, startup is an endurance event as well. Uh, I think confidence counts for a lot, same kind of senior positions. I think that yeah, if you're um, if you have a lot of self confidence, it will get you very far. If you have a lot of confidence in your own idea, I think it will get you far. Because I've been guilty of getting cold feet and then just pivoting. And yeah, I'm not sure whether it's because it's a bad idea or whether it's just because I've got cold feet. Um, and also, yeah, this kind of depends on your situation. But for me, it's like I suddenly felt thought, okay, I'm no longer a developer. I'm now a business person and a developer. Um, but if you're a CTO, I think you still need to know business. But then, if, obviously, if you're kind of a developer and a startup, then still you could just be a developer. Um, yeah, validating your idea. So it's really important to validate your idea. So, it, especially for a SaaS product or a software product, it's good to build something as quickly and as cheaply as possible and then test it with customers to see if they actually want it. Um, I do know some people that spend a year or two building with software and then. Uh, by the time they've built it, they then try and validate it, which is very scary to me because, yeah, you know, there might be no one that wants it at all. Um, so think simply and lean, that's, that goes along the same lines. Um, and also business drives the tech, so yeah, I've been guilty in the past of kind of wanting me to sit in a bit of an ivory tower and um, build the tech um, and not worry about the business, but yeah, I think a business is a very important factor as well because it pays for everything and it drives the tech. Uh, marketing is hard, yeah. So when I first launched um, this Just Eulogy idea, I expected everyone to be flocking to it, but <laughs> the internet's all about anonymity, right? So, um, Don't so. Use it. Don't use it. Don't use it, thank you, yeah. <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> use that one. <laughs> um, and with the other ideas as well, I expected everyone to love it, but yeah, see. I know now, I heard a quote the other day at a talk where he said basically, I think in 1992, people had, I think it was 3,000 adverts, um, you know, given to them in one day, but now it's something like 5,000, or so, oh, no, sorry, it's, it's about 15,000 now, I think. And back then, it, it's basically all about trust now, I think, because back then, you need to get in front of a customer, I think, five times before they trust you, <laughs> your brand name. But now it's more like 15, so you need to get your name in front of a customer 15 times before you can actually sell to them. Um, pivoting is hard as well. That goes back to what I was saying before, where are you pivoting because it's a good idea, or are you pivoting because you've got cold feet, or have you tested it enough, and there's loads of questions going through your mind. Um, you also need to talk to people, so I'm naturally an introvert, um, so the idea of picking up the phone and speaking to people, people um, it's quite hard for me, but it's also very useful. Yeah, I'm really glad I've been doing it. Um, tech people are hard to find. That's a really good people, for, a good thing for most of us in the room. I think normally when there's a skill shortage in one area of a startup, it's normally the CTO or tech. Um, also, I came to Australia as a skilled migrant, um, and that's because I'm a programmer. So obviously there's a lack of developers in general. Uh, I've progressed as a developer and a person, I'd say, uh, since I've gone into startups. Uh, that's been really good. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I've done it, even though I've struggled with the money part. Um, our lessons I've learned technically. So, yeah, if you're going to use Angular 2 and Ion and 2 and Beta mode, it's going to change and change and change. So I was actually using it a company I was working for in Beta mode, and the amount of money we must have wasted on, on salaries because we spend a week doing something in a certain way, then they change it, and then we have to change everything and catch up with them. Um, Beam stack is very quick and simple. Uh, Heroku is very simple and very good for small projects, probably something up to 200 users, I think. Um, AWS is very complex, but powerful, and I think they're ahead of the game because they were the first people that kind of 
uh, did this, this concept of platform as a service. Um, and am I full stack yet? Um, I know a lot of people who say they're full stack developers might be a back end developer with some front end or a front end developer with some back end. Um, I'm still yet to decide what the true kind of definition of a full stack developer is. Um, conclusion, uh, I think everyone should code as a great skill to have. I don't really need to say that in this room. Um, I think everyone should go into a startup. I think it's, it is really good um, for learning kind of as a person, as a coder, and just, yeah, it does really kind of um, enhance your skill set. Um, everyone should freelance. I like freelancing as well because you get a lot more client empathy. You have to do everything yourself, the business and the marketing and the tech side of things. Um, and remote working and freelancing is awesome as well. I just really like the fact that if you're a remote worker, it might be a bit lonely, but then you can kind of move to Melbourne for a month if you want and just come back to Brisbane, or you can go to the States for two months and come back. It's like, you just do whatever you want, you're location agnostic. Uh, yeah, please get in touch. There's all my details there. Um, I've got two GitHub followers, so it'd be nice to have a little bit. <laughs> um, not that I put that much on there, to be honest, but yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's my presentation. I hope you will learn at least one thing. If you have, then yeah, um, the reason for me doing this, um, yeah, it's all good. So, uh, any questions at all? How do you validate um, writing eulogies? Do you get people to give you feedback on <laughs> <laughs> That is quite difficult because obviously it's not like a it's not like a, you know something where you're renting bikes or whatever, where you can kind of there's always going to be people that are going to be wanting to rent a bike. It's like a very uh, immediate event. It's like an event that will only happen kind of when people aren't expecting it. Um, so what we're doing now is basically phoning loads of different people in the industry and trying to work out where writing eulogy, eulogies fits in because we know it's something that people are definitely going to want. Um, but yeah, it's just where it fits in. Um, so still trying to work that out. I think it's, I think because there are celebrants and we might, we'll probably go out to weddings and business speeches as well. Um, this is just starting in a niche. Um, but yeah, there are um, celebrants and they do, they do the eulogies as well. But I think there are a lot of people out there that do eulogies as well um, and write it online. So we're gonna kind of target the people that might be doing it themselves and funerals and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at at the moment, yeah. Uh, anything else at all? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> what do you think, like, what are the most important reasons or what are the most important things uh, which you think that you failed or someone who start up failed uh, and, and those have to concentrate more, like kind of marketing or search ranking or what are the important things? Uh, I definitely think the most important thing at first is to try and just get sales. Yeah, it's all about sales, sales, sales. Because a lot of people, I think, will um, they'll do business cards and they'll do like oh, the website's quite important, but they'll do like uh, designs and they'll think of a color palette for the website and they'll do all these things that aren't really going to kind of validate the idea. So yeah, it's really, really just focusing on sales at the beginning for sure. Yeah. So, like, for example, I want something. Sorry? If I launch something, yeah. some product, people don't know about it. It's just marketing. But nowadays, if, if, if you ask anybody, they just go to the Google and just type. Like, whatever. If I need something, I just go to the Google and I type it. Yeah. If you don't get it there, or in a first, on a first page, or first few results, it's very hard to find your product. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's, I think Facebook advertising is very good at the moment. Uh, I think only 5% of people with Facebook pages actually boost their posts. So Facebook advertising, if you don't mind paying a little bit, that can really get you in front of the right demographic and the right people if you get good at it. Um, so yeah, I think Facebook advertising is good for that. Or just picking up the phone and speaking to people or going out onto the street and speaking to people face to face, I think is a good thing as well because then you, you validate your idea very quickly, yeah. Uh, Google AdWords is, is pretty crap now because it's just so expensive because everyone, everyone's onto it. Yeah, so I think Facebook advertising in the next three to five years is the way to go for sure, yeah. Yeah. How many eulogies have you sold? <laughs> None, <laughs> none at the moment. Yeah, we haven't got to that stage yet. We're still 
still trying to, it was quite, yeah, it does get a little bit weird because I was, I was phoning uh, funeral directors posing as a customer, <laughs> which was a little bit dark. I was like, oh, I don't know if I feel too good now. <laughs> uh, trying to work out where it all fits in, basically, yeah. Uh, so none at the moment, but yeah, hopefully soon. Are you, are you worried there's no market? Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm always worried about that. Yeah, no, it's, it's trying to work out. Ooh. Oh, it's really, it's really... <laughs> um, Yeah, just trying to work out exactly. So basically, the seven day startup concept is you build it and then you validate it. Whereas a lot of other people will say you can just give surveys to people and validate it. Um, but the idea behind the seven day startup is it's a more quality validation because you've got a product and everything like that, and it doesn't take that long to build it anyway. Yeah, um, it's always hard because you're validating with people that probably aren't going to be in your demographic market in the near future as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's like it, it's basically things like content marketing as well don't work as well because it's like I would use your product, but I'm not. Yeah, you don't you want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Write your own eulogy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's another idea we have. Like, yeah, maybe in the future, is kind of getting um, people to organise the funeral beforehand, um, so they basically do it all themselves, so they don't have to worry about it. The family doesn't have to worry about it. Yeah, but we'll see. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're great. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. What is yes. the work-life balance? Like, do you end up working weekends, nights, things like that? Um, I try, so I do probably half a day on the weekends, and then at the moment I'm working three days uh, at the agency, probably doing 10-hour days on Thursday and Friday, and like three and a half on one of the weekend days. So I try not to do too many hours, because every time I've done that, it's counterproductive, because then you just can't, you just knack it and you can't work the next week or the next day or whatever. So I try to keep a balance here. Do you work on your own or do you work for somebody else? Um, I've got, yeah, I do have a, a friend who I'm going into it with. He's working full time, so it's not ideal. He's got family and everything, so he can't really give it up, but he's working evenings and weekends, yeah. It's a lot easier with someone else, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So you build, a, you build an idea in seven days, mm -hmm. you validate it. When do you notice that you failed? <laughs> that, yeah, that's what I was saying earlier about it's really hard to know when you fail. Yeah, it's kind of a judgment call. That's what I like about coding. It's fairly black and white. It passes the unit test, it doesn't. It kind of renders, it doesn't. There's a bug, it's obvious. But with this, it's a lot more grey. Yeah, you just have to try and make a judgment call. It's always different for every circumstance, I think. Yeah. Is that what the set target study is about? Is that yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a good a, point. A definition of done? Yeah, yeah, it's not like cement if you don't achieve your targets because I guess if you set a good target and you're only halfway there then you still could be doing well but yeah that is a good indicator as well yeah yeah uh, these kind of events that you have been participated in do they let you always go with the same idea like I imagine some of the judges are recurring in different uh, spaces like this do you so, mean the startup weekend or the yeah same? the startup weekend on the uh, seven days program and uh, last year I was in this hot day because of this thing a and I kind of have you know maybe this is the idea that you just have a concept and you go to all these different things and you learn from your mistakes until you eventually get there right mm, yeah but I, I I never knew if they let you participate once and once again with the same idea. And they're like, ah, oh, we already know this guy. Okay. Until he gets it right or, or yeah. Uh oh uh, yeah, I have like every idea that you come up with is guaranteed that someone else has done it in the world. Yeah, so uh, a lot of people say it's not about the idea, it's about the team. So you could just come up with um, another uh, you know employee uh, management program but then just do it in a unique way. And then if you've got a really awesome team, then they're far more likely to succeed than someone with a really original idea that only maybe two other people have done in the world, yeah. You would say that the idea is not that important then? Uh, I think it, it does matter, but yeah, I think the team matters more for sure, yeah. But the idea isn't as important as a lot of people might think.
Execution, yeah. Execution, uh, yeah, at River City Labs, they always say ideas are worthless, execution is everything, yeah. Uh, anyone else at all? No? Okay. Good stuff. Thanks for listening. Thank you.